Over the past few videos, I've been testing the U siphon, which is an auto siphon shaped in an upside down U. It's been kind of fun to learn some new things. It uh, doesn't do well with low flow start, but uh, does work with a sudden surge of water with the Shishi Adoshi fountain. It's time to move on to the Bell Siphon, which is a bit more tried and true auto siphon. I'd like to do a comparison between the U Siphon and the Bell Siphon to see how they add up. The first thing I'd like to say about the U Siphon is building it is extremely easy. <laughs> 245s, 290s, and a couple pieces of pipe, and it's done. Let's jump into the build of the Bell Siphon and begin this test. Now I know there are several ways to make a bell siphon, and most of them fit inside of the water or the storage tank. I'm gonna build one that goes outside, which should allow more uh, flexibility with inside the tank if it's gonna be for a duck pond, which was my original plan with the U siphon, was to uh, drain out a duck pond quickly and clean it out. So what I have is a two inch T, two inch cap, three, two inch to half inch uh, reducers, a half inch cap, and then a piece of half inch pipe. I think this is somewhere around 15 inches long. And then a two inch pipe, that's gonna be the uh, bell, and that's gonna be somewhere around, I think it was eight inches. But I'm not exactly sure how the ratios are gonna work. We're just gonna give it a try. I'm gonna set aside the T, the cap, the other cap, that pipe, and this pipe for now and one of the reducers. So with these right here, I have to do a little modification with the Dremel. Now, as it is right now, if you stick the half inch pipe into this reducer, it's gonna stop right there at the top. I need this pipe to go all the way through that reducer. So I'm gonna be taking out the little lip the, on the inside here with the Dremel. Of course, using safety glasses, ear protection, and a mask. It doesn't take much with the Dremel before that pipe will fit all the way through like that. Uh, it's a little bit tough to work with, but it does work. Okay, I'm gonna set these aside for a second so I keep them isolated. I'm gonna use some PVC cement to attach these three here. Now this is the one that does not have the adjustment there. It's just a regular old reducer. So first of all, I'm going to put the pipe on this side. Like that. And then the reducer goes on this side of the T. that. Okay, it's pretty simple. And so later on we're going to be putting the cap up here and that's going to complete the bell. One of these modified reducers will go down here. This pipe will go up to a certain level up here and then this one down here will attach like that. And we have to do one more modification here. Um, well first of all this pipe goes through long enough so that it can be capped here on the bottom, like that. And then there's gotta be enough room in here for water to come out of. So you'll notice that this reducer has this beveled edge coming out and the water's gotta come out of here somehow. So we've gotta take the Dremel and put a few little slits in this pipe that will be just below this lip here on this reducer. And that's where the water will come out of. The reason you put this cup basically down here on the bottom like this is so that when the water comes in here, fills the tube, pours over the top, gets sucked down, this cup allows low flow start because it will pool up here and then pour over. So that's the concept. Let's see how well it works. So the first thing I'd like to do is find out where to make the slits on my pipe here. So if I know that this cap is gonna be on to this point here, 
And remember, I've never made one of these, so <laughs> bear with me. All right, so that's going to be there, which means the top of our cup is going to be right here. All right, three quarters of an inch ought to do it. So let's come down here, three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to back off just a touch here. Okay, so between there and there is where the slits have to be for this to work. So I'm going to use a Dremel again to make a couple of little slits along here uh, that will allow the water to flow out. I believe those slits will do pretty good there. I got three of them. Now, I'm gonna try and get this on here, and I'm gonna to have to get a little bit of PVC cement there to get this on right at that line. So, I'm gonna probably just get this started here. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. Okay, I think I managed. Got it right below the lip there. Should be good to go. And so now, just need to get the cap on the bottom. Very nice. Almost done with this build here. This is in place. I've got to get this piece all the way down to this point here so I can uh, get it glued in. So maybe a little bit of a hassle, but See what we can do here. I believe that location is gonna be good. So I'm gonna drop some more PVC cement here along the edge and get that pushed into place. Okay, that ought to do it right there. Very nice. Now, I'm gonna let that set up for just a second and then get this piece attached into here. But while we're waiting on that, go ahead and get this two inch cap installed. Okay. All right, so this is the last step here is just to get these two put together. All right, and I believe that is it. So obviously the water's gonna come into here and fill this tube up until it hits that standpipe in there. It's gonna flow over and then come out of this section down in here. That's the concept. Let's go give it a try. Back out to the water testing ground. Because this thing is heavier than the U-siphon, obviously, I have got a block of wood here to counterbalance the bucket. I'm just going to stick this onto the pipe, okay? And so our standpipe is going to be somewhere right in here, which means the water has to reach that height in the bucket before it will pull this over. So let's see how well this works. The first test is going to be with the high flow storage tanks here. So I'm going to open that up. Should fill this pretty quick here. The water is right here. So it won't be long we'll start seeing something coming out of down here. Okay, I'm seeing water. Okay, it's pouring out now. There's some bubbles. Okay, there, it just pulled. All right, so that was nice. Definitely pulled quick with that uh, high flow rate. I believe I've already found an issue with this design. It never stops the siphon. Uh, so I think what I need to do is bring the holes up just a touch so that the water uh, has a chance to gulp in a little air down here at the bottom. Uh, so let me show you what I mean here. When I turn the water back on, the siphon is still going. See how it uh, 
flows back out. So the water going in is the water going out. So that's an issue. My guess is if it has a chance to gulp air right here at the base, it will stop that suction and the water that's in here will be able to uh, equalize, uh, I guess, that pressure. So let's see if that works. The bell siphon is new to me, so all this is experimentation. I'm gonna drill a couple of holes right above here so that hopefully as the water level gets low enough and this uh, siphon is supposed to stop, it will allow some air to gulp back up into the bell here. So let's just see what happens with this idea. I have everything hooked back up again. Now last time the problem was the uh, siphon pulled just fine, but it never stopped. So I'm gonna leave the hose going this time and see if it'll siphon out and stop and then wait for the next round. So let's see how it goes. All right, getting some water down here. Okay, there we go. All right, it just gulped and started. So we'll see if this is more water going in than the siphon is pulling out. Now it's going slowly. All right, to speed that up, I'm gonna turn this off until it gets uh, close to gulping and I'm gonna turn it back on again. It's not as fast as it was before. So I wonder if it is pulling in air already, having those uh, holes drawn in there, or drilled in there. It started the cyclone inside here. So I assume that means it's gonna start pulling air. I am seeing some air bubbles down here now. Uh-oh, my storage tanks are almost out of water. I guess now is a good time to see if it'll restart with the ram pump. I've got the ram pump here. I'm gonna crank it open and see what we get. Well, sadly, it's starting back again, which means we may have to do some more modifications to that siphon. I scrapped the cup idea by cutting it off. So now it's just an open pipe at the bottom. Let's see how this does. That'll definitely allow air to gulp in there. The purpose of the cup is to allow low flow starting. So we'll just see if this flow is enough to start without having that uh, cup on the bottom. If this low flow doesn't start the system, we can do what we did on the U-siphon and add a 90 degree elbow or a 45, or maybe even a longer pipe at the bottom to add a little bit of uh, extra length to get this going. Water's right there. Okay, water's coming out from the bottom. Let's see if we can get this thing to pull. It looks like it's matched. The water going in is the water coming out. Hey, let's see if that does the trick. There we go, it pulled. Nice. Removing that cup seemed to make a big difference in getting this to start. And also having to put this uh, extra T and a 45 with longer pipe also made a big difference. Now one thing um, I didn't show, and I'll have to uh, capture it again, whenever it uh, pulled air into the system, water bubbled back out into the bucket. So that was pretty cool the way it stopped. So let me run this again and show you what it looks like from the inside. Not the best camera angle, but I think it'll get the job done. Let's see when it pulls here. All right, there we go, it just started. Okay, get ready for that stop. 
Okay, it's pulled air. All right, here it comes. It's gonna burp back up. There it goes. Now it's burping all that water in the bell back up. All right, and it's done. Well, my first thoughts on the bell siphon. It's a little bit more difficult to build than the U siphon, but it seems to start much better on low flow. That was the uh, first test with the ram pump, and it worked just fine. Now the cup idea that I had was supposed to allow water to back up and start the siphon even quicker, but it just uh, held the water in the bell, so that didn't work. But adding this little tube here on the side seemed to do the trick quite nicely. Now as far as my original idea with draining a dirty duck pond, if debris gets stuck in this bell, it may be an issue. I don't know. It may be that you can just uh, turn it up and shake it out and it'll come right out. So uh, that's a consideration. Unlike the, uh, the other siphon, you can just pull apart. Now it's possible that since it's a, such a low pressure, I could just not glue this cap on here, pull it off and empty it out. So that's a very uh, interesting concept that may be even better than the U siphon. I'm going to stop here with this test. If you've got an idea for the next test, please uh, write that in the comments below and we will give it a try. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.